A few weeks before the autumn equinox, heralds from Rionos approached the nations of Navarre, Highgard, and Dawn with an opportunity for a grand adventure into the very heart of Brokeliand. Soon, Brokeliand is ringing with the sound of battle as the brave Imperial soldiers and heroes make their way through the forest. As one group moves deeper in, they find themselves in an unusual glade where they can rest and recoup. A small community grows, and one intrepid group sets up their bar, heavily fortified and full of useful supplies. This encampment is an oasis of calm in a storm of deadly insects, husks, and terrors. Here, the soldiers and heroes exchange stories, showing off trophies and spoils of adventure. Rumours in the camp are rife, and gossip starts over what could be causing the drop in Valorn activity, and how long it will last. That question is soon answered after a few husks wander into the glade. Hello everybody and welcome back to LARPs and TARPs. This week I have returned, I being Morgan, from an adventure deep in the heart of the Brock in Brokeliand, the forests infested with Valorn, to talk about my adventures at the player event Echoes of the Ancients. I'm joined this week by my two wonderful co-hosts, Tom. Oh, that's the first time you've ever called me wonderful. I'm blushing. It's Carrie's wonderful. It's the first time he's ever called you the co-host as well. <laughs> <laughs> I've and... been demoted. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all co-hosted. We've had this conversation before. I know, I know we're co-hosts, but he's just kind of there. He's just here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the toast master. And my other wonderful co-host, Tara. <laughs> Hello. Um, so this is... Gosh, it's been so long since I've been LARPing. It's been a whole three weeks. It's been a really long time since I've actually been on the podcast. <laughs> it is. Welcome back, Kerry. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, we've we've not been having a chance to talk about crafty nonsense for a while. I've been too busy talking about horrible barbarians. Yeah, but I've been busy crafting. I've been too busy sewing and embroidering to actually be on the podcast, as it were. Well, we'll have a we'll have a crafting pre LARP update mm. in a couple of weeks, I think. Um, but yeah, so I lived. Yeah, and maybe that's a slight spoiler, but I, I survived yep. the Brock. We were all sat in our, you know, homesteads, patiently awaiting the news <laughs> of whether or not you survived. Well, fucking last week, Oliver and Robert be like, you know, oh, maybe you'll die. We'll be looking for a knight to <laughs> kill that is your husk in the woods. But no, screw you guys. I live. I love, <laughs> I love the fact that you were off. Fighting in the front lines. I wonder where Nietzsche was during this battle. <laughs> what do you give us? A, what do we reckon? <laughs> like you're separated from Tristan. Oh, I was probably like somehow. I don't probably not for the whole campaign, but managed that day to smooth my smooth talk my way into the generals' meeting. <laughs> Just eating the hors d'oeuvres, pretending I am a merchant prince. Don't you know? Uh, that well, all passed out under the generals' table for a couple of days. Uh, <laughs> you just kind of like the Navari think, ah, oh, the leaguish representative is here, and then the actual leaguish representative shows up while you've got like a fig in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, w I was the warm up act. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, the plot for this game was essentially, for those of you that don't know, uh, the Empire's been doing loads of adventuring, I think is the best way to describe it recently. So we plunged down into Lorenzo's hole to look for treasure, um, which was full of little insect monsters. And then we sealed Lorenzo's I never read hull. the actual report about it. I just read the smut. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of smut about <laughs> Lorenzo's hull. Um, but we, but then there was also, we've been smashing slavers and loads of kind of like actions, independent actions and stuff. And there is a summer herald by the name of Rionos who is um, uh, a big fan of like uh, the adventure, I guess. So from conversations I've had with other people, again, I'm not a mage. I'm not an expert in this by any stretch, but he is, sorry, they are all about the adventure. They don't care about the the end of the destination or what you do or how it's the it happens. It's the, exactly, it's the journey. They love. They're they're usually represented by a dolphin. Apparently, from the description of how they appear, they're very aquatic. Oh yeah. And they like boats and independent sails. Not like a fleet. They're like a group of guys going out to do some adventuring. Boats and hoes. But boats and hoes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is. I'm now picturing me in my newly made hose <laughs> at the front of the boat. <laughs> one yellow leg, one blue leg. Um. But yeah, so we, um, uh, but he basically, uh, I keep saying he, 
Rhinos is both he and she at different times. Yeah. Um, but basically, they sent some heralds to uh, Navarre, Highgarden, Dawn. We're like, you guys have been questing, and Rhinos thinks this is sick as hell. So we're going to give you this big fucking cauldron. So the dolphin man wanted you to fight the tree people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. That's that's Empire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so we had this big cauldron, and if you drink from the cauldron, you are immune to the Valorn Miasma. So all the forests, a lot of the forests that are the Navarre live in are choked with this miasma, which puts you under um, the effect of venom, which means your bleed count is 30 seconds amongst a whole other host of horrible things like the disease of green lung and stuff. And so this cauldron makes you immune to that, which means adventuring into these places is more, um, is easier. You're more likely to survive. And it also means that we can get to somewhere called the heart of Teruniel, which is this the center of this old empire that predated the current empire. And we can get there and see what is there and help to find a way to destroy the Vlorn. Mm. It's very exciting. Tristan convinced Nietzsche to come along with in a tavern with a bet and a letter, which is an episode we did like a while ago. Oh, it's ago. like a mini skit, really, well, isn't it? Skit, yeah. I, I don't know if it's better or worse that the uh, advice from the Vlorn told me they exist just before shipping out. <laughs> he actually tracked me down and managed this. I'm, I just imagine the ship. What have I done? He informed me that he had a he. So he had a dagger. Yeah. Now, usually a dagger is not a huge threat, like one hit, whatever. Uh, his dagger can do cleave. Right. So he said, Oh, he the dagger they had at the table. Yeah. So he was oh, said he gosh. was always seconds from just <laughs> cleave. I don't, I don't know. Uh, for context, me and Nietzsche went to a player event and I ended up chatting to this um, advisor to the Valorn. The and I could just see. Um, Nietzsche walking towards the table and walking past it swiftly when he realised who I was talking to. Um, <laughs> until we Jack finally got Sparrow drawn into the scene from Paris of the Caribbean 2 when he's just behind that hedge walking past <laughs> <laughs> And then eventually he did set down as the advisor to Ford had stepped off to go and listen to one of the speeches. And then when he came back, I was just like, So, this is my travelling companion we were just talking about. <laughs> I, got to, I got to sit there with a big shit eating grin <laughs> reading his pamphlets. Oh. Oh. So, I think the best bit was so after about half an hour maybe 45 minutes of talking to me it's like so you don't believe me because of my wisdom and all my research you don't believe me because of all these hundreds of people telling you right you believe me because of all these books like yeah no <laughs> one with that many books could be bothered to write that many books just to fuck with me <laughs> so the world of Terry Pratchett must be real because he's written like oh, how many books? <laughs> That's so funny. But so basically, before we set out, I'd already won the bet. So Nietzsche gave me my two crowns and we set off into the Brock. Um, now, the, the player event was basically there's this peaceful part of Brokeliand where the Valorn aren't coming. It's a bit calmer. Not sure why, but it's a place where we can hunker down and rest. Pleasure Beach. <sighs> Yeah, it's close to a pleasure. That sounds like a false get. sense of security. Uh, oh, well, I was kind of thinking this is probably the most peaceful I've been for the last month and a half I've been in Brickellians, but yeah. we get there. Now, from an out-of-character perspective, the weather's been looking grim um, as we approach this event. It's like, all right, and it's in the field. And uh, I saw, I'm in a group of people, they said pictures the day before of like, this is the field now. And it was already slurry, like so, Thursday before I'd even got there. Uh, so Morgan, tell me, what do you get with dirt and a lot of rain a fucking uh swimming pool that is brown <laughs> uh so we arrive there we've given the message we can't take cars into the fields so we're gonna have to carry everything which is already just I, painful to i use. love oh, the picture with, of you and your little cart oh uh, as well those things weigh a ton yep like, i had my wooden chest full of armor luckily there were wheelbarrows but I Thank was God just like that. pushing that through the mud was horrendous. I was going to say, it can't have been easy terrain to push it through. When I got there, tents were full of mud. Like people's tents had flooded and were <sighs> just full of mud. It was already, I was like... I really hope we don't get weather like that. Actually, well, the at thing Anvil. is, touch words, from everyone's been saying this, like it's worrying. But yeah. at the same time, they have improved the drainage a lot. They've put wood chippings down. They've done a lot to... Yeah, that's true. Actually, ...prevent this fair. happening kind of thing like yeah the conditions might be bad but hopefully not as bad as it's been before i'm really glad we've invested in cots this time so yeah oh, have ground. you got cots yeah yeah perfect um i'm gonna i might get one for myself actually i just picture you floating out of your tent in your airbed like Wee. <laughs> i don't have an airbed it's just one of those like soft mattresses so i'll just be big sponge 
Um, <sighs> but yeah, so we get there. I get my tent set up. I try to set up my new tarp. Woo, lots of tarps! <laughs> tarp content! <laughs> 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 try to set up my new tarp. So loud. But unfortunately, I couldn't because of the conditions. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. But um, so I well, gave that a crack. But loads of people helped me. I want to say thank you to anyone that came along, gave me a hand on my tent, managed to get it set up. Uh, it was me. Uh, all of my in character accoutrement that I was going to set up and make it look like fuck it. No sleeping bag, bed, food. Mm. I'm just getting in, getting set up. Yeah, in that kind of weather. I was sharing a tent with uh, Will, uh, who you can find on Instagram stuff as Lap Analysis. So he was uh, staying with me. His character Viridian, and. Um, we kind of got set up. We were just kind of gearing for a really fucking muddy weekend. The more people that appeared, the more mud, the more slurry. And then we were like, and I realized, because I had originally intended to go get food, but setup had taken so long, I hadn't been able to get out to get any food. So I had nothing, nothing. You were hungry, boy. So we were like, right, tomorrow morning, I'm going to go out and get some food. But right now, Will, I've just looked on Google Maps. There's a five guys about 15 minutes away. Ooh. Do you want to go get five guys? You, you basically got a mortgage at a lot. Yeah, exactly. So we ran out, got some food, came back, got ready for time in, and then timing happened. And at this point, the whole field was just wet. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of enough of that boring shit. That was kind of us getting set up. And it was mm. like, I was kind of saying this though, it kind of, from an accessibility point of view, horrible. Like I can't imagine being like, if you had any accessibility issues or whatever, it must have been horrendous. But from like a, a I realism stuff. I felt like I had been in Brokelian for a month. Yeah. Like my Very muscles thematic. ached. My, I was soaked. I was trenching through and I was like, How's this- the trench foot? I don't, I, I was wearing like leather boots, which I think are like, I think they're decent leather boots, but they're mm. not like, um, they're not designed for this kind of weather. I think we're dry all weekend. Fantastic. That was amazing. Yeah. Our friend Adam, who was on the podcast, his boots broke, but mine said they're right all weekend. nails and all I hear. Yeah, just <laughs> sole ripped off. You need better nails, Adam. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we, I kind of had all my kit, I had my new hose that I've made, um, we were absolutely filthy by the end of the weekend, um, uh, and kind of ready to go out. And then the, I guess the first thing that set up was we were having like little national meetings. So we we're all getting up as our groups, like, mm. right, names, faces, who is here? What's everyone's names? And have you had the soup? So if you had had the soup, basically all the rules were normal empire rules for you. Yeah. If you hadn't had the soup, your bleed count was 30 seconds. Oh, gosh. And whenever we went into combats, I think it was people who hadn't been souped came back with green lung, which is just, I don't, I don't know what green lung does. Horrible disease. I think it's venom related. Mm. Um, and they had little, little red armbands on. The, the thing with the weekend was who here has been souped and who here hasn't been souped? And everyone that put their hand up it was just like, why are you here? What are you doing in Brickellian? And everyone was like, We've got a friend, Twig, who was just kind of like, oh, you know, some, I, I went to the mountains in North Wintermark and then I was some Navari and they were like, come along, we'll go, we're going to Brickellian. And they were like, all right. <laughs> so, so Twig kind of just uh, rolled along with us. I really want to RP with Twig again. <laughs> Preacher Twig. Ollie's great. Yeah, was, I need to meet this Twig. <laughs> Twig is wonderful. Twig is a little Varushkin Briar who was on Briar Business all week. I'll talk more about Briar Business later. But they were on Briar Business all weekend. It was very, there was a few Briars there. I met quite a lot of Briars. You concerning said Briar briars. a lot. It's a concerning amount of Briars <laughs> for given that if they died, they would have become a Dryad. I don't really ever see many Briars in um, they're the Anvil. They're sneaky. You don't oh, is that there, why? So you cut them open and then you see bark. I thought briars were very direct rather than sneaky. No, I, I, I was being, I was doing a bit of Navarre racism. No, <laughs> as in like you don't know who's a briar until they take an injury. Ah, uh, fair um, enough. No, but there was there's quite a few briars. I don't know if you've seen. Um, there's I a mean, briar. it has been several months since I've been at Anvil. Yeah, unfortunately, true. there's a briar in Dawn who's got like a massive wooden face who was at the event. Um, don't spend a lot of time I'll introduce you to prefer. some briars only when you're there dragging me to your tent for sun cream yes. are you yeah. sure you're not a briar Morgan your role play's so wooden oh get off my podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, oh it is your podcast then, is it? Yeah. well it's my podcast it's it's everybody's podcast in the Labs and Tabs crew but Tom you've been excommunicated <laughs> oh no um, yeah, no, so we um, kind of got set up, got some introductions. It was very funny. So Viridian, who I was with, introduced himself as the uh, greatest mage in Empire. Is he a changeling by chance? Yeah. How did you guess? Mm. Viridian was like, I'm the best mage in the Empire. And everyone was like, what? <laughs> he was like, yep. <laughs> he says, if you need anything, I can do it. Any, any spell, I can cast it. Don't worry about it. I can do anything you want. 
Uh, and I can do mass heals as well. So if anyone is like really screwed. like, does he have like a lot of? He has a magic item, which can mean he can cast he, the staff of Imperial Mastery, which does magic bullshit that I don't know. But basically, he's not the best mage in the Empire. Wow. Well. And but what's what's very annoying about Viridian? He's he's actually quite good. But is it is so he's good enough to pass as? Yeah. So no, potentially. There's a lot of very good mages in the Empire. What's incredibly annoying about Viridian is sometimes he's very useful, mm. and he you could tell he's like yes. Yes, earning my title and best mage of the Empire. He's good enough to get away with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, <laughs> like, I don't you if, keep him around. I don't know if he got away with it, but it was very amusing. So we went around, introduced everyone's names. There were some people who were like, you know, here for glory, uh, someone whose father had been killed. Uh, in fact, uh, Lord Summerstrong, their father had been killed and they'd seen him rise as a husk. So oh, God. Like really intense there, kind of going around the circle, introducing ourselves. Um, Juniper, the lovely physic who operated with me on multiple circumstances. Um, it was very nice, kind of, who's been souped, who isn't, who do we need to keep an eye out, who can keep an eye on us. Um, and then got around to me, and I went to go introduce myself, and Viridian just put his hand on my shoulder. I was like, this guy's amazing. Go on, tell him all about yourself. On the, every single time I went to talk, he just put his hand on my chest. Phenomenal. Come on, hurry up. Just like, tell them more. Tell them how good you are. I just stood there. I was like... Oh, I love that. I'm Sir Tristan. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I'm not fighting this. You're not, you're not Sir Tristan, though, yet, are you? I am. A oh, knight okay. errant is a Sir... Oh, I see. Um, so, um, so you don't have to pass your test of metal? No. So you have yo folk who have not taken the test, which don't have any title. Knight errants can be called sir. Questing knights are also called sir, but once you've done your test of metal, you can be lord, lady, dame. Uh, oh, okay. You so you'll be Lord Tristan. So I'll be <laughs> Sir Lord Tristan. Oh, sir, sir Lord. Lord. Oh, I'll, I'll be you a, sound like Dr. Professor Patrick. Dr. Professor Patrick, yes. <laughs> if I cast spells, I'll be Sir Lord Enchanter. <laughs> if I, well, no, that's if I become an earl. But. You nerd. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, uh, it's currently I'm Sir Tristan. Um, and it was just very funny. I was just like, I'm not fighting this. <laughs> it's like very much the kind of like, I've been dealing with Viridian for so long. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm Sir Tristan. I'll I get to know over the weekend. I like how his changeling energy outdoes your changeling uh, energy. Yeah, it kind of did. I think I did actually call myself the best knight in the empire very briefly um, as a kind of mirror. But Viridian was very, I was like, I can't. If the more, if I, if I entertain this, it'll get worse. <laughs> yeah. so I'm just going to move on. It's very funny. It does sound a lot of fun. Oh, I love him. He's hilarious. Mm. Um, so then it was kind of time in. There was milling around, a bit of chain, a bit of socializing. Uh, obviously, we've all had the soup. We're all feeling like immortal, unstoppable. Onion breath everywhere. Onion, oh, it's stank of onions. <laughs> in fact, that's actually, we did smell some garlic from the wild. You didn't garlic, draw so. her in the ogres, did you? With all those well, of the, fa- of the fashion. Ooh. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was kind of it. Like I said, kind of socializing. There was the drunken goose was there. Ooh, so nice. you could actually have a few drinks. Yeah, had a few beverages. They set up a... What's it called? A chamber of delights or something. Um, it's basically a when you, you cast it on a tent, and if you're a mage and you sit in there for 15 minutes, mm. you feel very relaxed and you get all your mana back. Nice. So Great. basically, our mages all weekend were just firing venoms out because they could go back and recharge. Nice. I, I'm just liking to picture a head kind of a Gatling gun mage. Just... Oh, that's what it felt like sometimes. Uh, just you could just hear by the power of spring and all its power, venom. And then just boom, boom, boom. It goes down, sit down for 15 minutes, come back. Venom, 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 venom. It's crazy. I um, love it. So I definitely know if you cast venom on a Valorn husk, dead. Yeah. Just done. So venom's a very good spell against the Valorn. So there was a Navari scout there by the name of uh, Kaziah, uh, played by uh, a guy called Dom, who I met. So I actually met them at LARPCon. Uh, one of our listeners so if you're listening oh hi. hello uh, it's very lovely to meet them all weekend I was looking at them going I have seen this person mm. before they didn't have tattoos last time so because obviously the Navari said tattoos on, oh so yeah of course I don't know who this person is uh, well no I do know who this person is but I could not always, and then we spoke Place, at the end yeah. I was like oh my god but they were really fun to role play with we had a few cool moments over the weekend but we were waiting for this scout to arrive and the scout was going to come with information about what was going on uh, and we had to pick a representative. We ended up picking a represent what a recent Dornish who used to be in Navari, who's now crossed over to Dawn. They um, were going to be our representative, and they spoke with the guide. And when the kind of scout came in, they were like, "Okay, so husks everywhere. This area is weirdly quiet. The rumor is that there are some pretty horrible types of Valorn hanging out." including something that we don't know what it is called a Valorn Horror. Ooh. No one had heard of a Valorn Horror. No one knew what it was. 
Very does not concerning. sound good. Not pleasant news. No. I was going to say the rest of the lawn sound horrific. It must be a very horrific creature to be known as a Valorn horror. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, Valorn are already very unpleasant. Yeah. On top of the Valorn horror, there was a rumours of a group of Druge in the area that were going to be moving basically through our encampment. Druge? Druge? Yeah, with some slaves. So they were transporting slaves. Um... And we need to keep an eye out. Basically. Question: Was the camp a safe space like Anvil? There's no combat. Is this no. okay? There was, Not in Brickelia. Uh, so until a point, everywhere in Brickelia, everywhere in the camp was at risk of an invasion. Cool. What happened was some husks were starting to wander towards camp, and we needed to go out and do some gardening. So we were like, <laughs> "Good." This is why I had my armor on because I knew where something was coming. It was very fucking dark at this point. Like the sun had kind of set. Ooh. We had to. We did, like, timing was delayed by like an hour and a half. Um, I forgot to say actually, we had a really good briefing beforehand where they were like, safety, no running because the muds are stay. Um, if you get strike down, treat it as a repel because cool. again, it's unsafe to go in the mud. If you would like to be struck down, you are welcome to. But you are more than also welcome to treat it as a repel and take yeah. ten steps back. Kind of advise not to. I can't get up. Too much armor. I'm yeah. sinking. Yeah, right. So it was yeah. kind of like, so a lot of us were crouching when we were on zero hits and stuff, but they were kind of like, don't, you don't have to go on your back, but you can if you want. That's acceptable. Yeah. Um, how how was that like stuff. the vibe? Does it, was it like scary? Did it have like a horror vibe? Like compared so, to like flying lead nightmare? <laughs> so um, I actually think some of the more horrifying moments happened when I was monstering. Okay. Honestly, because. When I was fighting, we were fighting basically on an open field. I'll tell you more about that later, but okay. we were that when I was monstering as a, a as something basically that there were some really scary moments. But when I yeah. was playing, kind of open fields, it was mostly all right, and there was a lot of us. Yeah. But the first night, everyone had taken basically had vol who was going to combat volunteered for a monstering shift, um, and so my vol monstering shift was Saturday daytime, and some people had gone off, including Adam had gone off berry picking or whatever so they were monstering on maneuvers friday evening yeah and we had to go do some extreme gardening so we're traipsing through the woods looking for husks and then they start coming out and they mostly look like humans you can see their eyes are green the faces are pale covered in vines as they start wandering out and the scary thing about the lawn is not that they're powerful it's that there's a lot of them <laughs> Yeah. And they start kind of surging through the woods. Some of them have got these horrifying long claws and they can heal their allies and kind of bring them back up as they're surging through. If you don't execute of a lawn, it comes straight back up on all its hits. And then we start kind of pushing through. We're in tangled brush. There's bits where it gets really tight as we're kind of pushing through. There's a highborn there who's kind of a cataphract who's leading this big charge. Very tall guy, like kind of bellowing voice, pushing us all through. Um, and you can kind of see the Valorn are kind of hiding and lingering and spreading out. And as I'm going, initially you're a bit nervous, you know, I'm a bit like, oh God, right, fighting in the woods, it's night. And then eventually things are going well. And I was like, hang on, I'm souped. You got so I, I end up just start breaking from the line, cutting down Valorn, and everyone was like, get back. And I think my favorite line, I said this quite a few times over the weekend, was turning around saying, what they're going to do, kill me? And then just keep going. Because... <laughs> I felt them all. We were fine and had a great time cutting down the lawn. There were some scary ones with a couple of like uh, man downs, but time freezes were really good. People yeah. got back up and everything was safe. So considering how dark and treacherous it was, mm. everyone's safety was looked after. We didn't have any major incidents, which was really nice. That's good. Was there any form of lights around at all? No. Wow. It was just like the haze of the late evening sun. Um, and then like the vague haze from Birmingham not too far away in the sky <laughs> oh god the ultimate horror <laughs> that's where the heart was <laughs> um, and so we're kind of traipsing through the woods um, and eventually I'm a bit far away to hear this but there's uh, I overhear vaguely kind of like you discover a flower and there's this big weird ass looking flower and someone pokes it with their sword basically spores are released and the people near it basically the ref kind of touches them and they kind of infect with these spores oh no um, and then Viridian cast detect magic I think and to get an idea of what was going on um, basically the release of these spores meant that it was going to be in the air for the rest of the weekend that if you were in the wrong place at the wrong time you would contract green lung uh. um, and it also had this from my, what I recall some weird kind of 
feel to it. It looked horrifying. It was just like this horrifying, deformed flower. If you had the suit, were you mean to that green lung as well? Yeah, if you were souped, you were okay. If you were souped, you were okay. Consistent theme. If you were souped, you were mostly fine. Um, Oh, something I did forget to say. Before time in, when we collected our player player packs, we got two randomly determined resources. And we got yeah. to roll a d6. Ooh. And if you rolled well, you got something good. If you rolled bad, you got something bad. I rolled well. I got an extra hero point for the weekend. Yay! Yay. Uh, so I had four hero points rather than three. What, hero, uh, what resources did you get? I got some Cerulean Mazarine and some True Vervain. Oh. Uh, and I traded Sweet. both of those for potions over the course of the weekend. Nice, can't go wrong. Yeah, exactly. Um, we were able to make potions, which was good. You could go to guard. There was like a mini guard. You can get potions and stuff. Yeah, mini guard. Just a little guard. <laughs> guard. Was it a Jesus? It, yeah, it was a Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um... And uh, basically had some real fun extreme gardening uh, and then made our way back to camp. I just love hey. that extreme gardening. That's what it is. That's what yeah. Bukelian was, a bit of extreme gardening. Um, had a really fun role play moment when we got back, basically. So again, Tristan being Tristan, full of energy, just kind of like, whatever, this is all good fun. So what a good adventure that was. Bit of hunting. Is there any more? Can we go do, Meanwhile, do some Morgan more killing? Meanwhile, Morgan inside, I'm dying. There's yeah. so much mud. I'm so <laughs> tired. I hate my life. Uh, and then Lord Summerstrong basically comes over and goes to give Tristan a bit of a dressing down. Just kind of like, do you take this as a joke? You know, kind of was like mm-hmm. my... Because you kept running off. Cause, yeah, because yeah. I was just running around having a glorious old time. And he was just kind of like, do you take this as a joke? Do you think this is funny? This is a war. You know, my father died from the Valorant. Kind of gave me a massive talk. He was like, "Why? Are you, what, what, what are you doing? And I had this real fun moment for Tristan where I was kind of like... And again, it's the kind of thing when the nobility talk to the old folk. And I'm like, all right, okay, I've got to be respectful here. And I was like, you know, with all respect, my lord... I've lost a lot of people to the Valorn. All of mm-hmm. everyone here has. Yeah. Um, and if I let that get into me, if I don't keep this face and I don't do this for the love of it rather than the hatred for it, yeah. I'll lose myself. And so I need to go into it with a smile on my face and love in my heart. And there's just this really nice kind of role play moment between us. And they're oh. like, I can understand that. Yeah, kind of thing. I respect that. Yeah. And it was just this real fun moment. It's like, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. Yeah. But it was also a fun moment. I like those little bits when people come to you with that. It's like, like a, you have to split a second decision to explore who you are. And yeah. I was like, that's who Tristan is a little bit. Okay. He's but, like, he yeah. goes about stuff like this because he's like, I need to keep going because horrible stuff happens all the time. Yeah. Had a bit of a spiritual crisis. And if you stop to think summer. about it, then. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. smile on my face. Keep it up. Yeah. This is fine. With love in my heart, we'll, we'll conquer it all. Love and glory. So that was a really nice moment. And then the rest of the evening was, oh, okay. Next thing that happens. Ooh. A cold rushes over camp. And this figure starts wandering through with a lantern. And it's a herald of, oh, Christ, one of the winter eternals. Yeah. don't know if you know much about winter. Oh, no. Endings. Death. Yep. That makes sense. Like, like just coming. creepy stuff. Someone, I think the wiki kind of says the four seasonal realms represent life spring is like youth and growth summer is the arrogance of youth mm. autumn is like being an adult and maturity and then winter is the fear is and the drought is drought is yeah winter and there was this winter herald that came through and there was a winter mage there luckily <laughs> who was kind of coming through the woods and uh they escorted them to think and everyone's pretty nervous because winter heralds don't look like nice people Mm-mm. winter heralds i think they had like a skeleton face they looked very concerned that's what i'm picturing to be fair yeah yeah and they came through and they were like whispering to um uh the winter, to mage. The winter mage and then they started to cast a spell around the tavern and then they basically whispered more to the winter mage and they started to leave uh and the as they're walking out, someone shouts, tell that thing to leave and never come back. And you can see like the, the, the herald kind of stopped and the major was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Turned around, I was like, we're very sorry. We're very thankful for what you've done. Thank you very much. Uh, and then there was another thing going around how they'd offered them a gift, basically. If you allow them to open up all the wounds, what they said, they would give you a boon. Mm. And also one of the winter heralds has offered everyone something called Kayla's gift which is that if you are ever kidnapped and going to be tortured or turned into a tortured soul, you can accept Kayla's gift and your body turns to dust. Ah, magical cyanide. Basically. Uh, you cannot be contacted through whispers through the Black Gate, which is like the you're on the way to the labyrinth, yeah. but you're just kind of ended, but you're actually fine. You're okay. Yeah. You've just been pushed. You are on your way to the labyrinth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so that was cool. So now basically they said, as long as there is a fire lit in the camp, the tavern is safe. Nothing, no Valorn can enter 
the Drunken Goose. Which is our non-combat zone. So there's like, a ni- there's like a nice in-store oh, reason why you can be non-combat. If you're ever feeling like overwhelmed and you just need to like take a breath and yeah. not be in combat. That's your non-com zone. I just feel like Mi- Nietzsche yeah. milking the rules and just Hellbird sticking out the tavern door. It's like, back, <laughs> Richard, back. <laughs> Get back here, you fool. Um, that or walking pick up, up the tavern. Let's move it forward, lads. <laughs> Either just, that, or having various masks and walking, staying in the tavern for a bit, walking out, putting on a different mask, then coming in and being like, ah, oh, no, I'm Sneetchy. That was Sneetchy. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen the Flintstones where they just pick up the yeah, cars to go um, along. That'd be so funny. Taking the tavern onto the battlefield. Like, <laughs> you're like, they can't get us, run at them. And like, halberds out all sides, spinning the tavern. Crossbows just firing. <laughs> Magical technicalities. Oh, finding those loopholes. Oh my God, that would have been so funny. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, that's all blessed. And then it's like a nice evening of role play. Um, just kind of sat chatting. I had, oh, was it on the Friday night? I believe it was the Friday. I had a long old conversation about some intrigue. Ooh, with a sneaky individual. sneaks. Can't tell you about that, but that was nice. Got blue balls in our listeners. No, have, enjoy your blue balls. Listeners. Can you tell us about it after recording? Yeah, I think so. Hey. As long as you don't, as long as you don't, you don't know anything. No, I, I, will, I will remember I anyway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, and then uh, drank way too much. Ooh. Like, way too much. Like, people were offering, oh... Um, this, this is the thing, you don't really drink much at no, lot. But this I did for some reason. I think because you probably had time to. Yeah, mm. well, that's the thing. So this event was more or less the same length as an empire, but felt like it went past, like, really quickly. Right. Um, but we uh, basically... Uh, Mortarian Carver, played by Alex Bevington... Uh, had this butter scotch rum where he'd dissolved Werther's originals in rum. Oh, it was so good. That it was so good. so good. That sounds like the drink, for the perfect drink for an alcoholic granny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so nice. Uh, interacted. I think that was the first, I was, it was really funny. I was talking to Twig about what the Valorn were who continued to pace but away from me. So I was like, can, can they still hear me? <laughs> As they kind of marched <laughs> off, then marched back again. Uh, and then speaking to under uh, Calavesi Briar. So there was a bunch of Briars this weekend. There was quite a few of them together. And all weekend they were just running around. And when I was like, what are you up to? They're like, Briar business. And then they'd look <laughs> cheeky. I just imagine them, them being like like children, like short and just it, like giggling and running away. That, basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we're off on Briar business. And then they'd go do stuff. And I was like, what are they? What's going on? I don't want to be involved with Briar business. Yeah, well, why have we got to be, be a st- Briar, then you're coward. Why have we got to be stupid Naga? I want to be a Briar now. Yeah. Briar business. The Briar is the only lineage we need left in the Jackdaws. And we've got the full. Be set. a Briar, you no. coward. You could have a yeah, full bark a scout. <laughs> <gasps> you could. You wouldn't get. You wouldn't have to worry about sun cream on your head. You could be a, be a briar, you coward. <laughs> no. then, you, then I can get Twig to bring you into briar business. That's you the could. only reason you want me to be a briar. So, okay, if you're listening, we convince have... Tom to become a briar. Yeah. <laughs> we have to. We have to know what the briar business is. Briar business. Oh, me, we need a man on the inside. Say, Maybe we should just stick some bark to Salt's face in the night, and then we've got a briar. <laughs> That's how briars oh, are born. Right, genuinely, um, we should do this. We should make you a briar, and then we should have a dramatic fight. I cut you across the face on Friday night, and you wake up the next day with a line of bark down your face. Be a briar, you coward. No! <laughs> and then the Navari who shares your tent can be like, <gasps> oh, my oh my God! Oh my gosh! If I did become a briar, I might have to change my name to Briar Blessed. Nah. Why are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. I don't know where else to go. <laughs> so basically, over the course of that night, I drank the entire bottle of mead that I'd brought along with me and shared with others. Had like a nice time drinking. I had a really, so... Was that the LARP com mead? Yes, it was. Well, was it good? It was very nice. Oh, Trolls Bottom Mead, unofficial sponsor. It was very mm. nice. Um, we went to... Um, they had like a songs and story circle. And it was really nice because I find songs and stories can be a bit big. I think it's really good to go. I think especially if you're in Navari, like it's a really cool thing. And definitely if you go to Anvil, give it a go. Yeah. Like, like if you if it's your first time at Anvil. But for me, definitely. it gets a bit too big. Whereas this was like a really nice little circle. I think for me, because there's l- probably be less going on at this player event, it might be a bit bad because I've got such a low attention span and there's yeah. so much going on at Empire. I can't sit there at a songs and stories well, for too long. Well, that's why I say well, it's your first event. You don't really know what to do. You've not got much plot you left. Uh, well not got much plot yet it's definitely a good thing to check out but 
uh, again, it is like all night, so you can drift in. Yeah, and out, you can drift in, you? dropping out. And also, I think one of my favorite things I said, the Drunken Goose, which is right next to the Songs and Story Circle, the perfect place to listen to Songs and Stories. But it's also a great place to do like dodgy business because oh, yeah. no one can hear what you're saying. Uh, because there's the blare sure. of songs and stories, and the only person that can hear you is the person right across. No, the, the one you're shouting into the I air. don't believe my dear Tristan would get up to dodgy business. Oh, I would never get up to dodgy business. No scheming here. Not this little little guy. I'm just a little guy. Just a little guy. Just a nice guy. Just a nice guy. Just, just a, a baby. Just a, I'm just a nice little guy. Um, but yeah, I had a wonderful night drinking too much mead and rum, um, and then woke up the next morning feeling. Not a hundred percent. Like you'd been marching through Brickelli for a month yeah. and a half. Yeah, I was starting to get a headache from the miasma. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I had as much water as I can. I had like a mouth like a dry arsehole. Uh, and then just oh got God. Him, uh, I didn't know what a dry arsehole was like. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Dry as sandpaper, whatever. Uh, you need to use baby wipes. It'll moisten it right Not up. sandpaper? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, woke up uh, and it was Dawn's turn. Like there was a few of us that were fighting. We were fighting Druge. The Druze were kind of coming through camp, uh, towards camp, and they had some slaves. And we're like, right, rescue the slaves, kill the Druze. Cool. And then I've got some really good pictures from this. There was one motherfucking Druze. Uh, I spoke to them, kind of in character, out of character afterwards, who just kept trying to incite me into an honor duel. Not an honor duel, a duel. They kept trying to get that me to fight them. very undruze. No, they were trying to lure me towards them. Oh. They were like, I didn't realize all Dornish were cowards. Come on, bro. Fight. And I kept trying to get towards them but I am wearing a lot of steel yeah. and you can't run in these conditions and they kept backing off I'm like just if you want to fight let's fight they kept heckling me I kept trying to get towards them and I couldn't get to them I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna scream have you seen that uh, TikTok fuck you Tony yeah. oh fuck you <laughs> yeah, there was literally I was like get I, look, I will, I kept, I'll fight you and then they kept taunting me every time I walked away and I just went there was an archer I was like archer shoot that fucking awoke like I'm getting sick of it and they just kept talking to me it was so funny like in character <laughs> raging <laughs> yeah. like they kept trying to take my attention away go to other stuff and they'd still be there I cleaved his arm at one point and he was like you're scared of a druge with one arm I was like <laughs> No, <laughs> I just can't run. I'm not scared of you. You're a nuisance. Yeah, you're an absolute nuisance. <laughs> if you cleave the leg, would you just like kind of crouch down rather than... Yeah, kneel? so if you cleave the leg, it was crouching. You didn't have to go to ground at any cool. point. Yeah. But yeah, good old Druge or Druge. Good old Druge's fight. Druge got a Druge. Druge got a Druge. Had a good old fight against the Druge. A Druge life. Uh, and then we, after that finished, we kind of came off the field. A um, uh, little bit of socialising. There was some non-combat plot which was going Ooh. on. Non-com. So uh, a friend of mine who was playing a summer mage uh, was kind of engaging a lot of this because there was a summer regio discovered Ooh. nearby. A uh, summer regio was like a concentrated area of summer magic. And so uh, she led a little group to go out to this regio and they realised there was a door to a chamber. A uh, chamber is... A cha yes. <laughs> a chamber is like, basically, if a human... or If a, if a person goes to the realms, they die. Mm -hmm. There's these things called chambers, which are like an in-between. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, you've told us about these before, yeah. actually. And a chamber can be as big as a forest. Like, they can be massive, but they're like a, a world between worlds. Like a pocket universe. Yeah, kind of. And apparently they met this lovely little herald called the Gardener. Aww. And the Gardener was a herald of the Iron Duke, and they had like a white face and golden spirals, and they were like, oh, hi there. You know, who are you? And they had loads of questions. They were like, oh, I heard, well, I heard some adventurers were coming to uh, the forest. And I thought I'd open up a little door and say hi. Um, and they Cute. were like, uh, oh, I'll give you a reward for all the adventuring you're doing. What currency do your people use? And she was like, oh, rings, crowns, and thrones. Exam. Pulls out like some finger rings, like rings that go on your fingers. And was like, like these? And she's like, no, it's the name of the currency. And he was like going through it. And apparently like a pile of old, like profound decisions currency. He was oh. going through. We kind of like, there you go. And gave some of those and was like talking to them. Um, and basically I was like well I'm the Iron Duke and the Iron Duke likes to give people challenges um, so if you want I can help you out if you come, come with some challenges um, they were saying sometimes those nasty plant creatures wander into my regio uh, but I deal with them very easily um, and so they kind of like basically over the course of the event people were able to go challenge this guy I was supposed to do it but we ran out of time on the Sunday and I was very Aww. upset but it was like test of martial might test of wisdom and test of luck and there was a few things and basically the uh, Herald kept asking questions about the religion and was really interested and kept asking stuff um, 
and then was like, right, well, I'll see you tomorrow after all this challenge has been done and we'll have another challenge. If you've got any more challenges, bring them along. And they were like, oh, yeah, you know, the major was like, brilliant, yeah, okay, that sounds good. Um, and so that was like the nice non-com plot that was going on in the background. Meanwhile, I was monstering. Here comes Tiddy Morgan. I was playing a t- <laughs> <laughs> so Tig old biddy. I, sp- I spoke to God before and I was kind of like, hey, what do I need to wear for monstering? And I was chatting with them and they were like, how athletic are you feeling? <laughs> and I was like, I can feel athletic. Why? I was like, do you want to be a dryad? I was like, yes. So a dryad is basically a briar that dies in Brookellian and comes back as a launch one husk. Much more so in a way, powerful. you have played a briar. In a way, in yes. A, way. a dead briar. <laughs> uh, and so we went to get a stage for set up for monstering. And it was kind of like, there was like the main camping area, then a bridge over a small river to a field and a small forested area. And what was essentially going to happen? A couple of things. There was going to be like fetch quests. There was going to be some herb searching. So basically you could find some herbs to use for the uh, rest of the event to make potions and heal people. And there was an artifact that I'll get into more later. Um, and basically we were setting up and I was wearing this dryad suit. And it was kind of like uh, a big kind of those big trousers, big uh, t-shirt, and then a massive kind of chest piece. And then this horrifying mask. We'll put a photo up for the mm. thing with these massive wooded tendrils coming out and they had massive latex claws. And big old titties. And I had the massive badonkadonks. Tiggest <laughs> old biddies. It was, a, it was ridiculous. This yeah. motorboat the empire all, to death. All anyone could say when we got back to camp was, did you see that of a lawn with the massive boobs? <laughs> That's all anyone could say. And, I, and it was very funny because I kept saying, yeah, you weren't laughing when I was screaming as I ran towards you. You were <laughs> shitting yourself. But everyone would go back. I was like, did she have one with the truly <laughs> enormous boobs? It was insane. <laughs> but yeah. I still can't believe that was your costume. Uh, so I won't talk about the stats in detail. Yep. But what yeah, I will say is that I had a decent amount of hits. Yeah. I could cleave. Yeah. And also with 15 seconds of appropriate role play, I could get everything back. Apart from the cleaves. Um, so what I'd do and this was fun you stand in the middle of the woods and start writhing as a forlorn creature people run because they don't know what's about to happen all that's happening is I'm healing so as they give me distance (laughs) I am just there healing away whilst they sprint away now I'm just imagining you in your big booby dryad costume Uh, (laughs) just writhing Um, oh Morgan audition for the next Bond girl (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah so uh, that was really fun and then what was happening was the first time we were monstering, we were playing shepherds and there was a artifact hidden in a glade, an ax of some description. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to defend the ax. So we were herding the husks to stay around the artifact and we were wandering around. You have like a little crux in there, like a the lawn dog, like, hey, Nick, go on, <laughs> well, I was kind of, doing, you might have to cut this out, Alex, but I'll do the kind of sound I was doing. I was kind of going, like really high pitch Ooh, in this thing whale. as we're walking through I was just kind of so I was yeah I was doing a really high pitch screech beckoning husks as we were kind of bringing them towards us and people were coming across and as they came because we normal husks can walk at a slow pace and shamble we can run oh no and what was fun is because if you've not fought before before you don't really know what's going on you see us kind of shambling as they kind of come in these big horrifying suits and they get close enough and you know fucking sprint oh. and like cleave and then people are going down this, and now you get you get hit with the venom right you're dead instantly right if you're ever lawn spawn I was like oh well that was fun never mind go back to the respawn point go go back out again oh okay <laughs> running through the lines herding husks at people letting them deal with like get, do some hits and then I come in and cleave and let the husks finish it off running up and down having a great time yeah. honestly so much fun I've, I was like being when you're when you're a barbarian the empire you have to have some self preservation yeah when you're of a lawn you have none so I'm just running right into crowds like slashing them up until like I go down go back to respawn five seconds back in again just yeah. over and over and over and over again. Oh, it sounds so cool. Oh, it was amazing. I um, regret not taking your money. I told you, you should have come. Um, but then when we, um, essentially when we uh, finished that, they managed to get the ax. <laughs> the next thing that happened was some herb picking. And the guy said to us, right, they're sending out some people to pick herbs. They're not very well armored, but we've told them if they're quiet, this should be really easy. 
And they said to the husk, people who are playing husks, if they're quiet, if they're being sneaky, let them kill you without a fuss and let them do their thing because there should be no combat. However, if they start fighting, you can start fighting back and the dryads will come out. So the players come out and they see it. We're all just, we're all kind of sat behind the thing and we're briefed. You're no longer shepherds. You're rapid dog, rabid dogs who yeah. want to kill. So we've completely shifted now cool. what we're doing. Um, and all the husks are kind of wandering around and we, we kind of look over and we can see the players there kind of going, like stabbing them, like quietly executing them as they go around. Then one of the husks wanders to kind of attack one of the players. And as they do that, one of the other players goes, oh, well, they've seen us now. We might as well start attacking them. Oh, no. So then the ref comes around and goes, dryads, go, 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 go. And then the five of us, five dryads, sprint, screaming as we run around the corner, like with that high-pitched, uh, kind of real high-pitched, almost like a whistle kind of thing. From the I like to think that them. player is listening to this going, oh, fuck, if I hadn't said Oh, this. my God. And they just <laughs> scatter. Oh, right? I bet. Now, here is where it got a bit tricky. The players hadn't been briefed that they are allowed to run. Oh. They still had the brief from the night before that they weren't allowed to run. Oh, right. no. So we ran after them. They didn't run. But loads of the players whoosh, ran back. Now, again, I'm not really thinking about that. Adrenaline pumping, I've been told, rabid dog, kill, 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 kill. Yeah. Yeah. And I run through, and I end up, there's like four or five very lightly armored mages. Oh, oh poor no. mages. I don't know if you know this, but a cleave to the back or the front that's not armored by anything, but it's armored with light armor or nothing, you zero hits. So I'm sprinting through, getting a back cleave. A couple of times I hit them the first time and I say cleave, but they kind of almost go, did they just say, they didn't really, they said to me afterwards, I didn't realize you'd say cleave. I didn't know you could cleave. And then I got my second time cleave and then whoosh, boom, they hit the ground. Because eventually they get the memo they can run. Yeah. Because someone shouts don't run. And I thought it was because there was a bog. So I waited for players to get out of the bog, waited for them to get a bit distance and ran after them. Got in the back, cleave, one, cleave, two, cleave, three, turn around one of them has just been healed by a mage I run up to them again cleave they're on the floor again run up to the mage cleave so I think that's my six cleaves done yeah just spoilers I had six cleaves and then I'm looking at them they're all bleeding out there's no one there to save them and I look up they're all alone the Imperials have left them <gasps> oh no I look at them all they're all wearing red armbands that's a 30 second bleed count because they're not souped did you kill and I just look, Six I just look at, Six there are players. four, I look at four players oh. on the floor bleeding out. I'm like, shit. <laughs> shit. And uh, they're like dead, dead. Dead, dead. You, you dead, deaded them. So we had a conversation afterwards and basically the refs kind of got the players and got the crew together and said, right, we fucked up. Right. We didn't brief you that you could run. We didn't brief you that you, we, uh, yeah, we didn't brief you guys that you were allowed to run. So you yeah. didn't. And that's caused deaths. So we're going to shake it up a little bit. You four fell into a river full of spring magic and you have been partially healed, but not fully. Yeah, so you can, enough to crawl back. Enough, no, 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 enough to be alive. And someone has noticed you're alive and they're going to do a rescue mission. Oh, oh okay, cool. okay. So we got everyone back in positions, the dry, and I, one of the people I'd knocked down, I was like, we were talking about, because they gave him basically, they said, instead of you dying, we gave you all like four traumatic wounds. Yeah. That you're real fucked up that need to get healed. And I spoke to one guy, I was like, do you want me to fill you full of spring magic and turn you into a briar? And he was like, yes. So what happened was, as everyone came into the field, some of them are lying down, dryads are walking around. Then I've got this one guy, I've got one hand around like his shoulder with things around his neck, one with my hand on his knife that he's trying to push towards me. I'm just going, <sighs> as I'm like turning into a briar. And I can just see him turn to everyone as they start coming and going, help me, help me. As he's kind of looking out, as I'm kind of like, breathing trying to like, yeah. like fulfilling this guy with spring magic and then one of them goes form a line and then my head just <laughs> darts and looks at them detach and then start to kind of prowl towards them and then the other dryads start prow prowling and pulling the uh, um, other husks and then they cross into the combat line boom sprint and then it's just wave after wave after wave after wave as I try to yeah. save these heroes they managed to get them all back nobody died <laughs> But it was really fucking intense. That does sound like Yeah, that sounds amazing. Mad. Oh, honestly. Oh, and then another thing, the Navari guide, I actually did kill him because we cleaved his legs, yeah. got him on the ground, and then basically he was on the floor with his knife. I put one hand on his shoulder. He was stabbing me with his knife. I was just like slamming him with claws until poof, he hit the ground dead. R.I.P. Navari guide. Rescue mission to save him. 
Right. And as they get to him, he stands up. <laughs> he turns into a husk and starts attacking them. Nice. Oh, it was oh. so good. It was it was the best monstering I think I've ever done. Oh, yeah, so it sounds amazing. so immersive. It was crazy, and I just felt terrifying. I've seen the picture since. Yeah. I and would not terrifying. want that running you towards me. terrifying. Those big old titties running at you, you can never stop them. But that's what I was saying. Everyone was laughing. You weren't laughing <laughs> as I ran towards you. Um, but yeah, that was basically the end of my monstering shift. I had an amazing time with that. And then I think we should probably wrap up there for this week and we'll come back with part two next week. Yeah. yeah sounds good. You're, you're leaving us on a cliffhanger. Yeah, exactly. It's, actually, I wish I hadn't said I'd live now because I could still be like, did, did Tristan... Sub- did Tristan survive the weekend? Quick, um, re-record the episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, from scratch. Awesome. Uh, see you next week, everybody. Thanks for listening. Yep. Thanks for listening. Bye. If you want to keep in touch, don't forget to look for us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you'd like to support the podcast, you can find us on Patreon. Thanks very much for listening, and we'll see you next week.